Hello, so I'm going to explain how to get the file for your Mathematica assignment off of Stellar and then we're going to go through what's inside of the file and then we're going to upload it back onto Stellar to get a grade. So you may have gotten here from MITx, but you need to get to Stellar and go to the gradebook module and find this assignment to download the Mathematica notebook that you're going to complete and then when you're done doing all of your work, save your work inside of that notebook, come back into Stellar and upload your file in order to get a grade. All right, so I'll be back with the Mathematica notebook that I will have downloaded from Stellar in a moment and we'll go through what's inside of that file. All right, great. So I'm going to assume that you have downloaded your assignment off of Stellar or MITx and now we're gonna talk you through what's happening in this file. The first time that you open the file, you're gonna see this screen over here. There's two important things. One is this enable dynamic button. You should enable dynamics for the assignments that you're getting in this class. You can trust that we won't put anything dangerous inside of these files. In general, this shows up in Mathematica notebooks that are going to run code that you can't see, but we promise these ones that we're giving you are safe, but in general, be sure that you trust the person who sends you a file if you click enable a dynamic. So here, we're gonna click that, and that's gonna make this thing come to life, and it allows us to run some code that's gonna make the interface work. So now what we're looking at is the Code Seal Personal Data Analytics Program. The files that we're giving you have the ability to collect data about the work that you're doing, you do not have to participate in this, but I want to explain to you what options you have. So these first two buttons describe the option of fully opting into the system. So if you choose to link this file to your Wolfram Cloud account, which is a free account that allows us to identify you uniquely, then you can choose to do this. Any data that we collect is going to be stored using a salted keyed hash on a server, so it's as secure as a bank. No one can figure out whose data that is, but we know how to give it back to you later if you want to play with it. So if you want to analyze your own data, you have to do this one. The other two options are this one, which is similar to any other software, which means that you're going to anonymously give us data. So you're, you'll be willing to let us collect your keystrokes and your code evaluations, but neither we nor you will be able to access that data and associate it with you in particular. So it's just some A student has clicked a button, A student has run a piece of code. The third option is that you don't want us to collect any data whatsoever. That's a perfectly viable option and if you don't want us to collect any data, click that last button and this file won't collect any data. You'll have to make this decision for every assignment you get and you can feel free to change your mind as the semester moves forward. But for now, we're going to assume that we want to anonymously donate data. So we're going to click the button and we're going to move into the content of the actual assignment. So what we're looking at here is called a COSET. It's part of the Code Seal computational curriculum system. We're going to see this top button right here, which is to open and close the COSET. Every file that you get during this semester is going to have this button. When you click that, it shows a bunch of content. The first thing that we're going to see is some instructions that you should read. I'm going to cover a bit of this during the video, but it tells you how to submit your work and how to get a grade. We'll cover that later. For now, we're going to scroll past that and go to the actual physics content sitting in this chapter. So we found a chapter, there might be one, there may be many in, multiple, in future assignments. Right now there's this one that we're gonna click to open it. And what that reveals is a sequence of sections that have content. These brown sections have content that you're going to read as well as code that you need to run. So you need to go through each one of these, find every piece of code and run them in order from top to bottom in order to see the results appear as you go through the file. For now, we're not going to go through the details. I'll come back and do that after. We're going to scroll this notebook up, and we're going to realize that we've come to this other thing. So we have these brown sections, which have content that you need to read and code that you need to run. We have these green sections here, and this is where you're going to actually do your work. 
So these problems are where you insert your work. This is how you're going to get a grade. I'll talk about that in more detail in a moment. Just when you open up the file and look for this, find the green sections. You have to put your work in there and save the file and give us the file to get a grade. And then after you save your problem, you're going to come down and you can see a solution that's been provided by the professor. Once you access the solution, it's a really, really good idea. If you really want to learn how to code, the professor's solution may have things that you didn't think of. If you incorporate those changes and move them back up into your solution to the problem, then you're going to be iteratively learning how to incorporate other people's feedback into your code, and this is a really valuable skill. So my recommendation is to read all of the content that you're given, take your best shot at doing a solution to this problem on your own, view the solution from the professor, and take that information and put it back into your own solution. You can save that work again, and we'll see all of that. We're not doing nitpicky auto grading of what the work that you give us here. So don't worry about putting in everything that looks just like the professor's solution. If you write something that looks like the professor's solution, then we're going to get very suspicious that you likely just copied and pasted that up into here, and you're going to miss out on a great learning opportunity. So take your best shot at providing your own solution to this, and then look at the professor's solution and incorporate any changes back up into your solution. So I'm going to let you go find your file, find these sections, and I'm going to come back in a moment. We're going to go through the details of some of these sections so that you understand how to use this file. So I'm going to hop behind this screen, let you go explore it, and I'll be back in a moment. All right, great. So I'm going to assume that you have your file, you've gone down, you've opened it up, and you've found some of these sections, and now we're going to talk in detail about how to interact with the content in this file. So we're going to scroll up to the very first section where we're going to read some content, and you're going to click open closed section in order to access the content. There's text inside of these sections, and you should read that, but there's also, importantly, code down here. So every time you find a piece of code inside of a section, you need to run that code in order from top to bottom. So you need to go through, it's like a treasure hunt, and you have to find every piece of code in order and run it in order to see the results later in the file. So let's come to this. We're going to click on that cell and shift enter in order to run that piece of code. And we're going to get an important dialog for these notebooks. So there is always initialization code to make graphs look a little bit prettier for you. And sometimes we make a little bit of definitions inside of the code to make things run easier. So you should always run initialization code in the files that we give you. In general, if you get a Mathematica notebook from somebody that has initialization code, you should find out what's in it to make sure it's safe. With us, we promise this is safe. So you definitely want to run the initialization. That allows the system to run the code that's hidden from you, and then it also runs this, and we get back a result. So that's you should do this. Every time you hit a notebook, run through it, run all the code. If you want to make edits or play around with the code that the teacher has given you in these sections, you can. If you just click inside of this cell and start trying to type as if you want to edit the cell, it's going to pop open a dialog. So we're going to move that over a little bit so it's easier to see. And when you look at this, it explains we, you, we don't want you to edit teacher's code because we want you to always be able to get back to it. But you can make an edit because we do want you to play with the code. So we're going to click yes in order to make a copy of this code. And when you click it, you'll see it pops that code into the notebook in a way that you can now edit. So if you click inside of there, you can make the charge much bigger. And then you can shift enter in order to make that edit go into the system. And make sure that when you change code here, it's going to affect code down there. So feel free to make edits and play around with the code that you've been given. Sometimes when you set variables, it's going to affect results down there. So you'll want to make sure that you run all of the teacher's code in order to make sure to see the results later in the file that you expect. So that's how you should interact with these. Sometimes you'll find interactive graphics inside of these sections. Sometimes you'll find links to Wikipedia articles. Sometimes you'll find links to YouTube videos. Again, it's like a treasure hunt, and you never know what you're going to find. So always go into the read sections, go from top to bottom, run the code, follow any links that we give you. 
I'm going to let you go run through all these read sections, and then we're going to come back and show you how to submit your work inside of a problem section. Fantastic. So I'm going to assume that you've read all of the content up to this place, you've learned some code, you've learned some physics, and now you're just ready to apply that knowledge in the context of coding this problem set. So let's click open section in order to see our first problem. So you'll find problem statements. You'll also find these optional hints and tasks. In order to see hints, you'll have to do tasks earlier in the file in order to get the credits to buy these hints. For now, we're going to have to do two things to save our work inside of this file so that when we upload it to Stellar, we will be able to grade it for you. So we're going to insert a solution down here, and then we're going to use that button up there to lock the solution into this file so that when we save it and upload it to Stellar, it will get graded. So let's insert our solution by clicking this button that opens up the section. We can hover our mouse over here. If you right click in Mathematica when you're inserting a cell, you get some options. We're going to insert a new cell and we're going to insert a text cell. So not only can Mathematica support code, you can insert text. It's a really good idea to describe your code using these text cells. So let's click on that, insert a text cell. I'm not going to solve this problem. That's your job. It's your homework assignment. For now, I'm just going to pretend like my solution is I'm going to add some numbers. I'm going to describe my thought process, add a little bit of narrative to the code so that when I come back to it in 10 years, I'm going to be able to see what I was thinking and say, ah, that was a clever idea. I'll use that code again. So now I'm going to hover my mouse right below, click and insert code like we did before by just typing. So let's do 2 plus 3. We can run that using Shift Enter to make sure that this is in fact the solution that we like and the one that we want to submit. Once we're happy with the work that we've put here, we have to come up to give feedback and save my work and click on that. And right here, you get some options. We want you to be very honest. This will not affect your grade. We're going to use this to improve the curriculum next year. This is totally anonymous, no matter what choice you made when you open the file. So if it was too hard or if it was too easy, let us know so we can adjust it. Right now, we're just going to give no comment. And when we click no comment, it pops open a dialog. That's saving the work inside of the file, packaging in such a way that when you upload this file to Stellar, we can grade it. So what you'll see is now we have these gray cells right here. You can't edit these. It has a timestamp. This is so that when you upload it to Stellar, we'll understand when you did your work. We're not going to be grading this using a computer. This is actually going to be viewed by a person. And we want you to be explicit and think about describing your code and writing code that's very meaningful. If you go down to the solution and you see something interesting, then you should come back up and incorporate that into your solution here. And you can do that by editing this other section that we've created for you. So if we come here and instead of adding numbers, we say, I want to multiply numbers because I saw the professor do that and I thought it was very clever. Let's change this to say multiplying. And then we can come down here and do 2 times 3 and run that piece of code and see that we get 6. And now we've made some edits. We've incorporated some changes because we're learning. And we're going to come back and save this because I also want the grader to see that I, I not only tried the problem myself, I also learned and added some additional stuff from the solution that I saw. So let's scroll back up to the problem. And we can use the same option here. And we make a choice as to whether we like that problem. You can also give custom feedback. We won't do that now. We'll just say no comment. That's going to pop this up. That's going to save the second amount of work that we put in there. So you'll see now up above, there's the I added numbers. Down below, there's the I multiplied numbers. And down below that, I can make more edits and keep submitting more work if I want to. But everything inside of here needs to be locked into this gray form. You need to save this file. And then you need to go upload it back onto Stellar in order to get a grade. So I'm going to let you do some work, attempt your first problem, and then I'll come back and show you how to access the professor's solution after this. All right. 
one last thing to do. Now we're going to access the solution that has been provided in the file. We can do that by opening the section. Then we can use the Access Solution button to access the solution. So as long as you've submitted all of your previous problems, then you get to access the solution here. If we click on this button, we're going to see the first step of the solution. So it tells you how many steps are in a solution. Of course, we're not going to give you the solution. You need to do the problem set to find that. Then when you're happy after reading any text, you should find the code, run any code by clicking and shift entering. This is the same as a read section where you can edit that if you want to by making a copy of it. But you should make sure to run any code that's in the solution so that you can see how the professor has approached the problem. Next, you're going to give feedback in order to see the next step. So when you click on this, it gives you some options. This is similar to what happened before. This is totally anonymous. This will not affect your grade. We're just going to use this to improve the curriculum next year. So please be honest. Don't worry about anything affecting you. And let us know what you think of this particular step in the solution. We're going to click that. And that's going to give us a dialogue because this was the last step in this whole solution. So once you've seen an entire solution, you should do a little bit of reflection. We're really trying to prompt some metacognition here. So stop and think about. You just did some work up there. Now you've seen the professor give you some solution here. Think about what was different. Think about what things you learned. Reflect a little bit and then click proceed when you're ready to move on inside of the file. So clicking proceed makes that go away, lets you move on in the file and you can move on to other problems and other solutions. So that's it. That's the mechanics of using these files. Feel free to email any questions, and I'm going to say goodbye for now. Wait, one last thought. In order to get a grade for this assignment, you need to go back to Stellar, go to Gradebook Module, where you downloaded this file from, click on that, upload the file that you just did all of your work in, and then you will get a grade. All right, now it's actually goodbye. <laughs>